What if one railway project could redefine how an entire nation experiences time, distance, and connection? In a country where progress has long been measured by pipelines and skyscrapers, Canada's most transformative leap forward may soon arrive. Not in the sky or underground, but on rails. This will be Canada's first high-speed rail line, an electrified system built from scratch, designed to link Toronto and Quebec City across more than a thousand kilometers. Promising to slash travel times in half, cut emissions, and supercharge regional development, it represents a radical reinvention of national mobility. Unveiled in February 2025 by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, this isn't just a transportation upgrade, it's a test for Canada's technological ambition, political will, and climate commitments. Can a country known for vast distances and slow trains finally deliver on the promise of high-speed rail? Or will this $100 billion dream derail before it even leaves the station? The stakes are high and the outcome could reshape Canada's future. Today, we're diving deep into the boldest rail project in Canadian history. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. Canada's journey towards high-speed rail has been defined more by delays than development. Despite its vast geography and dense urban corridors, the country has never implemented a true high-speed rail system, an omission that stands out among developed nations. While countries like Japan, with its Shinkansen network, and France, with its TGV, began moving millions at over 250 kilometers per hour decades ago, Canadian rail remains slow and outdated. Core inner city routes such as Toronto to Montreal and Toronto to Ottawa still rely on shared freight tracks, averaging speeds under 130 kilometers per hour and often suffering from delays, infrequent service, and low reliability. This stagnation has created a growing transportation bottleneck, particularly in the Quebec City-Windsor corridor, where more than half the population and GDP are concentrated. Congested highways, overloaded airports, and mounting environmental concerns have only heightened the need for a modern alternative. As the federal government commits to achieving net zero emissions by 2050, electrified high-speed rail has emerged as a crucial solution. This ambition now represents Canada's long overdue answer, a high-speed rail network designed to boost mobility, reduce emissions, and stimulate regional development. It is the largest infrastructure project in Canadian history, signaling a bold shift in how the country moves forward. Announced in 2025 and named Alto, meaning high in Latin and Italian, Canada's first dedicated high-speed rail project aims to set a higher standard for national mobility. The name Alto reflects the project's goal to elevate how Canadians travel, connect, and coexist in a more sustainable and integrated future. It marks the country's boldest step yet toward modernizing transportation, replacing outdated, carbon-heavy systems with clean, electrified alternatives. At its core, Alto is a fully electrified, high-capacity rail network designed to move passengers at speeds of up to 300 kilometers per hour. By shifting millions of short-haul trips away from planes and vehicles, it's expected to significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions, alleviate traffic congestion, and improve urban air quality. Supporting Canada's long-term net-zero targets, the system stretches over 1,000 kilometers from Toronto to Quebec City, connecting seven major stations, Toronto, Peterborough, Ottawa, Montreal, Laval, Trois-Rivières, and Quebec City. Each station will be newly built or significantly upgraded with smart design, multimodal access, and last-mile connectivity in mind. The corridor exclusively serves passengers and no freight, via dedicated grade-separated tracks built entirely from scratch to global high-speed rail standards. Delivered through a public-private partnership led by the Cadence Consortium, Alto will be rolled out in phases through the 2030s, with full operation expected by the early 2040s. Building Canada's first high-speed rail system is a massive, multi-phase undertaking requiring meticulous planning and advanced engineering. As of 2025, full-scale construction has not yet begun, 
Alto is currently in the co-development and design phase, with route alignment, environmental assessments, and engineering groundwork underway. Alto calls for fully grade-separated track, meaning no level crossings with roads or freight lines, and exclusive passenger operations. Electrification of the corridor involves high-voltage overhead infrastructure, likely designed to operate efficiently with regenerative braking and future-proofing for grid decarbonization. Modern high-speed train sets capable of sustaining 300 km per hour will likely be similar to SNCF's TGV systems or Global Siemens Alstom equivalents, adapted for Canadian climatic and regulatory conditions. Stations must be equipped for accessibility, baggage handling, security, and durable design to withstand Canadian winters. Axis, structural, and geotechnical engineering will be crucial. Quebec's river valleys and southern Ontario's mixed urban and rural terrain demand significant tunneling, bridging, and earthworks. Route optimization must balance cost efficiency, environmental impacts, and minimal community disruption. The Alto High Speed Rail Project is being delivered through a hybrid public-private partnership, combining federal support with private sector investment. In February 2025, the Government of Canada committed $2.9 billion over six years to cover planning, route selection, land acquisition, environmental reviews, and early-stage engineering. This foundational funding enabled the Cadence Consortium to take the lead leveraging institutional capital, debt financing, and revenue-sharing agreements to fund the majority of construction and operations. The total project cost is estimated between $59 to $89 billion, with $74 billion widely used as the working figure. Key financial partners include the Canada Infrastructure Bank, participating provincial governments, and international collaborators such as France's SNCF which brings both funding and technical expertise. The timeline reflects the project's scale and complexity. Planning and environmental assessments will continue through 2030, followed by phased construction. Initial segments, such as the Toronto-Ottawa and Montreal-Quebec City corridors, are expected to begin operations by the late 2030s, with the entire network between Toronto and Quebec City projected to be fully completed and operational by the early 2040s. This phased rollout allows for financial flexibility, sustained political alignment, and better risk management over time. As one of Canada's most ambitious infrastructure undertakings, the Alto High Speed Rail Project has drawn sharp criticism across multiple fronts. The foremost concern is its cost, estimated at $100 billion which many view as excessive for a corridor already served by highways and air routes. Critics often compare Alto to California's long-suffering high-speed rail project, warning of potential delays, overruns, and political backtracking. Its public-private partnership model, while promising efficiency, has also sparked concerns around transparency, long-term public control, and fair affordability. There's growing unease that the rail system could become inaccessible to lower-income passengers, fueling inequality in mobility. Indigenous rights pose both legal and ethical challenges. The proposed route crosses traditional lands, making meaningful consultation essential, not only for approval, but as a test of Canada's reconciliation promises. Environmentally, construction threatens ecosystems and communities, despite the project's long-term green benefits. Politically, Alto must survive decades of shifting governments, economic downturns, and changing public priorities. Further criticism points to potential strains on revenue, underestimation of ridership demand, and competition from emerging electric aviation technologies, adding further doubt to an already complex megaproject. Despite its cost and complexity, the Alto High Speed Rail Project offers wide-ranging benefits that could transform Canada's economic, environmental, and social landscape. At the forefront is its environmental impact. As a fully electrified, high-capacity rail network, Alto is expected to shift millions of short-haul journeys away from planes and private vehicles, substantially reducing greenhouse gas emissions, easing highway congestion, and improving urban air quality. 
Over time, it will play a vital role in helping Canada achieve its net zero emissions target by 2050. The project also brings major economic advantages. During construction alone, Alto is expected to generate over 50,000 direct jobs and inject tens of billions of dollars into the national GDP through increased activity in manufacturing, construction, and supply chains. New station developments in smaller cities like Peterborough and Trois-Rivières are poised to attract investment, spark housing development, and decentralize growth from major hubs like Toronto and Montreal. Socially, Alto will promote national cohesion by connecting regions with efficient, shared infrastructure. It will improve accessibility for rural and suburban communities, enhancing mobility and economic inclusion. Operationally, the benefits are immediate, travel times of just over three hours from Toronto to Montreal, and under an hour from Ottawa to Montreal, promise to improve quality of life and boost productivity nationwide. The future of Canada's Alto high-speed rail project holds both promise and uncertainty. If managed successfully, Alto will be more than a railway. It will be a defining chapter in Canada's economic modernization, urban development, and climate strategy. It ushers in an era where Canadian cities are linked not just by geography, but by high-speed electric mobility and shared economic possibility. Alto has the potential to set new global standards in winterized rail design and electrified infrastructure, serving as a model for future routes within Canada and even cross-border links to the United States. However, with a multi-decade timeline, Alto must overcome numerous challenges. What do you think? Will Alto be a transformative national success or a costly missed opportunity? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.